Okay, for our start today's attract mode setup guide for Windows PC. If you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I release almost daily. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it helps my channel out a lot. So we're doing a track mode today and this one's been on my to-do list for a very long time and a lot of people have been asking for this one. Now you're going to notice over my desktop there's a lot of folders just here. Now the thing with this front end system is that a lot of people think it's actually very hard. And yeah there's a lot of linking directories to do but it's actually very simple and that's the point in my channel. We're going to simplify this. So we need to download quite a few things before we actually get up together with the front end itself. So first of all, we're obviously going to need to download the track mode and we're going to go to downloads just here. And I'm going to be downloading the 64-bit binary version of this. There's two versions here. We've got 32-bit and 64-bit. So let's just quickly establish what type of computer you're running. So just open up search and type in system information. From here, under system type, you'll find times 64 if you're running a 64-bit base computer or times 86 if you're running a 32-bit computer. So once you've established which type of computer you've got, you can then download either version. So for me, it's going to be the 64-bit binary zip. And whilst we're on the internet, we're also going to download some themes. And this is, to my knowledge, one of the best themes you're going to get nowadays for attract mode. So I'll leave the links in my description for this. And we're going to download two. So we got Novato theme. I think that's how you pronounce it. Novato. Novato. So if we just download this one, and I've already actually downloaded this. And if we just scroll down a little bit further to the bottom of this website, which is on the X Arcade, just go onto flat blue, read more and we're going to download this theme too so download fat blue theme and like i said i've also downloaded this one as well now what we need to do is download a couple of emulators so attract mode literally means what it says it's a front end so we're going to be using emulators in the background of this and of course attract mode is going to give us that glossy look so we need to download emulators to work in the background and for this i'm going to use nintendo nes for now and i'm going to move on to the sega mega drive or sega genesis shortly so fceux is a standalone emulator and I'm going to download the Windows 64 binary of this. Again, if you're unsure what computer you've got, do the system information and either download the Win32 or Win64 version of this. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is actually extract attract mode. So we've got it just here. We downloaded that from the attract mode website. And you're going to find a lot of files and folders in here. So I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. Right click, new folder and just simply call this folder attract mode and what I'm going to do is extract all the contents of that attract mode zip which I've just downloaded and just drag them inside of that new folder I've just created and once we've extracted that we can now delete the dot zip folder of attract mode so we no longer need that so just put that into the recycle bin so if we open up the attract mode folder first thing we're going to need to do here is create a roms folder so just right click on the empty space new folder and roms and what i'm going to do within this roms folder is just drag some folders in so i've got some nes games just here and i purposely made a nes games folder to go inside what i'm actually going to do now i've dropped in that folder is just rename this to nes and whilst we're here, I'm also going to do the same with my Mega Drive games. So again, I'm just going to take away the games on the ends just to make things as simple as possible and just put Mega Drive in one word. So in my NES folder, I've got a few different Nintendo NES games all in .zip. And in my Mega Drive, I've also got that same amount for Mega Drive or Genesis games. Next thing we're going to do before going any further is actually configure one of the emulators which I've got so far. So this is going to be the Nintendo NES emulator which I've downloaded. And again this downloaded into a zip folder so I'm going to create another folder on my desktop, new folder and I'm going to call this folder FC EUX and again I'm going to just drag all the contents inside of that folder. Okay, so once we've extracted the emulator contents, we're going to go into the emulators folder within attract mode. 
and I'm going to drag in that FC EU exporter and we now need to configure this emulator itself so if I just open up the emulator so as we can see it's opened up in window mode and of course when it comes to running this for attract mode we want this to open up in a full screen mode and we also need to configure a controller for this so to configure a controller first I've got an Xbox controller set up with my computer for this I'm just going to go to config and if I then go to input from here I'm just going to need to briefly set up my controller for this so configure virtual gamepad 1 so I'm going to press up on my d-pad and press ok left on my d-pad and press ok and so on now as we can see as I'm doing this those mappings are changing and just remember to press ok every time you do this and ok and ok now the controller should be configured and ready to go what I'm going to do next then is actually set this emulator to boot up with full screen so config video and enter full screen mode after game is loaded so if I just check this one and go to close and let me just make sure that this emulator is working okay before linking this up with attract mode so if I open up one of my games so my games for NES are in my attract mode folder and in my ROMs folder NES and if I just boot up randomly 1942 And whilst we're in the emulators folder, I'm also going to do the same for my Mega Drive or Sega Genesis emulator. So I've already extracted Fusion and this is a Sega Mega Drive emulator. And I'm also going to drag that into the emulators folder and also configure this one. So if I open up set config controllers and if I go under port one use, I'm going to select my controller for this and then just go to define bottom here we can find we can map out and this does this automatically using this emulator and if I just leave that for now and go to apply and let me just boot up a Mega Drive game before we also incorporate this one into a tracked mode so load Sega Genesis and again it's in my track mode folder and it's going to be in that ROMs folder I've created and Mega Drive okay so we've done all that and what we're going to do next is just delete those zip folders of the emulators we no longer need those and we're going to open up the attract mode folder again and we just downloaded some themes so within the attract mode folder we're going to go to layouts and just here we get extract those themes that we downloaded so Novato goes into that layouts folder and I've also downloaded the flat blue theme so again just extract that into the layouts folder and let's just delete these two zip folders and if I just come back out again Okay, so let's actually open up Attract Mode for the first time. If I double left click on Attract.exe and Windows protected your PC, just go to More Info and Run Anyway. Okay, so first thing you're going to see when you open up Attract Mode for the first time is select a language. So I'm going to select English and I'm going to press my Enter button on this. And here we go so this is a tracked mode there isn't anything added yet it looks pretty bleak first thing i'm going to suggest doing just by using your up and down keys on your keyboard just scroll up to controls and if you press enter to enter into this one what we can do is actually map out your controller to work with a tracked mode now remember we've got mappings here for a tracked mode and we've also already configured the controller mappings to use with the emulators so from here what I'm going to do is just go up to up and if I press enter on this I'm then going to just remove input it says joy zero and I'm going to add input and press enter on this and if I press up on my d-pad there we go we now got d-pad working with up and if I go to back 
and I'm going to do the same with down. So if we go in there again, I'm going to just delete remove input joy zero. And if I press enter on that, add input, enter, and I'm going to press down on my controller. And that's now mapped out. And I'm actually using my D-pad at this point to go up and down. So if I go back by pressing enter, and we're going to do the same for left. So just remove this one, add input and left on my D-pad and back and same for right. And right on my D-pad and back. Now we're also going to want to define select. So if I press enter to go in there, I'm going to use my select button on my controller and that's now mapped and just go to back. And you've got lots of different settings here you can actually map out for your controller. So a lot of these you might not need. And if we just use down, to go right to the bottom, we're going to find joystick mappings. And if I press enter to go in here, I'm going to use joystick zero. And if I press enter and then down or up, I can then select my controller. So press enter on this and go back and back again. Okay, so that's some basics for mapping out your controller. And if I press select button, we're now going backwards. I'm also going to mention just here, if you map out your controller and you can no longer access the main menu, if you just press tab, that will bring you back to the configure menu like I can see here. I'm also going to go down to insert game and add input and I'm going to press the start button for this. And go back and it escapes to come out of there. Okay, going to let you into a little secret. Should you need to go into a Windows mode like I've done just here, to do this, all you need to do is just go down to General. And if I press Enter on that, if we then go up to Windows mode, press Enter, you can then change the window, no border, fill screen, full screen. Uh, for this, I'm going to just very briefly do this through window mode so I can jump in and out. So we're going to look at hotkeys next. So obviously to exit a game, once we're in a game, we need to configure or map rather something called hotkey. So to do this, what I'm going to do is just go up to emulators and I'm going to use the hotkey for Nintendo as this little explanation. If I go to Nintendo, what I'm going to do is go down to exit hotkey. Now at the moment, you'll likely see this is blank. So if I press enter on this, I'm going to press down on my left analog stick and down on my right analog stick. And this should then technically exit you from your game. However, just as a backup, what we can actually do with most standalone emulators like this one I'm using here is actually configure it or map it to a hotkey. So if I just come out of attract mode for now, what I'm going to do is go into my attract mode folder, emulators folder, and I'm going to open up the Nintendo NES emulator. And from here, if I go to config, for example, and map hotkeys, we're going to find just here, exit. If I just use one of my buttons on my controller, so I'm going to use the RT button and OK, this by pressing either the combination through a track mode, which is left and right analog six down. If that doesn't work, we can also use the RT button if you've got one of those on your controller to exit out of the game. Okay, so if I then exit out of attract mode, what I'm going to do is go back into the attract mode folder, into the emulators folder, and you're going to find a new folder here called templates. If I delete everything, press Ctrl and A, that's going to highlight everything here and just delete. What we're going to do is add our own emulators to this, so by leaving those templates in place, it's going to confuse things and we don't want that. So we're going to come out and come out again and back into attract mode and this time we're going to just go to emulators and press enter to go in there add emulator and i'm going to call this nintendo and press enter and if we just go down to executable what we need to do just here is link this up with the actual nintendo nes emulator so if i press the windows button on my keyboard this is going to bring us outside of attract mode and I'm going to find my attract mode folder from here and inside of emulators we've got my Nintendo NES folder and what I'm going to do is just left click on the executable just here right click on it copy as path and if I go back to attract mode and press enter on executable I'm then going to press Control in V and that's going to paste in the executable 
and just make sure you take away those quotation marks. If I then press enter, that's now put into place. Next thing we got is ROM path. So just like executable, we also need to tell attract mode where the games are for Nintendo NES. So again, if I press the Windows button and go back into my attract mode folder and just go out one and it's in my ROMs folder and here's my NES folder. And what I'm going to do at the search bar at the top is just left click on that and right click and copy. And if I go back over to attract mode, under ROM paths, I'm going to press enter. Just backspace this directory and then control and V to paste in the directory of our NES ROMs. Next up, we got ROM extensions. Now, my games are in .zip, so I don't need to alter this or edit it. Next thing we do need to do is just go to System Identifier. Now, there's a website we can use to get the correct terminology for this. We're just going to go to the Games Database and the Games Database. And at the top here under Browse, you're going to find Platforms. And just here, if we find Nintendo Entertainment System, And here we go. And this is it. This is how this needs to be spelled under System Identifier. So if I just copy Nintendo Entertainment System and in brackets NES, I'm going to then go back over to Attract Mode and press Enter on System Identifier and just Control and V and paste that in and press Enter. Next, we need to do is go down to Info Source Scraper and press Enter on this. If I press up or down on my keyboard, I'm going to actually select the game's db.net. If I press enter on this, and we're just going to then go down to generate collection ROM list. If I press enter on this, we're going to just leave this to generate this, and that's been done. Next thing, we're just going to go down to scrape artwork and press enter. And if we then go to back and back again, we're now going to find the games have been imported into a track mode and complete with artwork too, or some artwork. So I'm going to press tab on my keyboard and we're also going to upgrade the theme. So if we go up to displays and just remember tab will bring you into configure menu and I'm going to press enter on displays and I'm going to press enter on Nintendo. And if I then go up to layout, it's going to say a track man. If I press enter on this, and press up and down on my keyboard, I'm then gonna find Novato. If I press enter on this, and just scroll down to back, and back, and here we go. So we've now just set up Nintendo NES, complete with artwork and the theme itself. If I go to open up a game on my controller, So I'm now going to move on to my next system. So just like Nintendo NES, this one's going to be very similar, if not the same to install. So we're going to go through this process again. We're going to open Attract Mode. And what we're going to do is just open up Attract.exe again. And now because I've configured things, just remember that by pressing the Tab button, this is going to bring you into your Configure menu. So from here, what we're going to need to do first of all is just go to Emulators. And we're going to add a new emulator for this so enter on this and we're going to call this sega and enter and just like nintendo nes we're going to need to go down to executable if i press enter on this we're just going to come outside of attract mode and then obviously we're going to need to find the executable for that sega mega drive or sega genesis emulator so again it's going to be in the emulator folder inside the attract mode folder and Fusion 364 is the emulator I've chosen for this. And if I just left click on fusion.exe, right click, copy as path, and then if I go back into attract mode, I can then press Ctrl and V 
I just take away the quotation marks. And this is now going to read directly from that emulator. So just press enter on that. Next up, we're also going to want to put the correct ROM path in place. So just like the Nintendo NES, this isn't the correct ROM path. So press enter on this, backspace. And what we're going to do is just press Windows button again to come out. And I'm going to go back to my track modes folder. And in that ROMs folder that I created, my games for Mega Drive or Sega Genesis is in here. And at the search bar at the top, I'm going to just left click on that and right click and copy. So that path has now been copied. And back into attract mode and press Ctrl and V together to paste that in. And press enter. Now again, we got ROM extensions. Now for Mega Drive or Genesis, some of the files you can get are .mds dot mega drive or whatever uh, but my games are actually in dot zip and as we can see just a minute ago when i tested this dot zip is working fine with this emulator we're also going to need to go down to system identifier so if we go back over to that website which is the games database what i'm going to do from here is just go to browse platforms and just close that and just like nintendo entertainment system we now need to find the correct wording for Sega Mega Drive. So uh, with Sega Mega Drive, because in some parts of the world it's called Sega Genesis, it could be one or the other. So as we can see just here under Sega, it's actually named as Sega Genesis. And here we go. So if I just highlight this and just copy it and go back into a track mode, what I'm going to do just here is Control V again to paste in Sega Genesis. And info with source scraper, if I press enter on this, I'm going to use up and down buttons on my keyboard. And I'm going to find the games database or the gamesdb.net if I press enter on this one. And then if I just scroll down a bit more. I'm next going to press enter on generate collection in ROM list. And finally scrape artwork, press enter. And if we just come out of here, just by going to back and press enter on that. And if I press up, that takes take us to the bottom, press back. Now, if I press left and right, we've now got Nintendo as well as Sega. And here's my Mega Drive games. Now, some of these aren't going to have artwork. And that's literally down to the naming conventions, which we can edit the names of our games. And we can also attempt to edit the names of the artwork for this. What we're going to do then is actually change the theme for the Genesis or Mega Drive. So as we know, I'm using this theme here, which is Nivaldo. So if I press tab button just here and go to displays, I'm then gonna go to Sega, press enter. And if I go up to the layout, we got Novato just here still. I'm gonna change this just for example, to use another theme. I'm gonna go for the flat blue which I also downloaded and press enter and just go back and back again. So as we can see, Nintendo Entertainment System now has this theme just for this system. And by going to Mega Drive, we've now got another theme entirely. Now, whilst I'm talking about themes, if we go into configure uh, by pressing tab, and if I go up to displays and just select Sega, for example, we can change how the actual theme looks. From here, I can actually manipulate how this looks. So for example, if I go down to layout options and press enter, I can change how it's presented. As you can see, that's now totally flipped and it's not ideal, but the option is there if you need to do this. So I'm going to turn my head sideways now and just change this to how it should be. Okay then, so if I go into a game here... Cool, 
and as we can see that's now working fine too okay and also looking at customization in themes what we can actually do is customize how particular themes look so as we know i've got this theme for sega mega drive or sega genesis and i've got a different theme entirely for nintendo nes so to configure this particular theme how i want it all i need to do is navigate up to displays i'm going to choose sega which represents my sega mega drive theme and from here i'm going to go down to layout options and as we can see we've got a range of options here to play around with also got crt shader if i enable this and i'm also going to go to scan line overlay if i press enter and put strongest on enter and come back out as we can see the game images have now got a filter applied to them, which almost looks like, yeah, a scanline filter. And like I say, we can do this per theme. So for example, if I wanted to do this for my Nintendo theme, I would go to displays and then just select Nintendo and layout options. And like I say, each theme will have its own selection of customizations. As we can see, the configuration layout just here for the other theme for Nintendo NES is different. Okay, next up, I'm gonna show you how to actually add an intro video. What we're gonna do is just head over to this website and normally to find an intro video for a track mode, it normally is just a case of Googling or using whatever search engine you use for a track mode intro videos. You can also make them yourself. They need to be in .mp4 format. So I've just got one here as an example to show you how to do this. Now we've got two versions of this particular intro video, 16.9 uh, aspect ratio and old school box image 4x3. If I use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio version, just left click on this link just here. And this is now downloaded its intro video in .mp4 format. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is just open up this file just to make sure it's working and I'm using VLC. Okay, cool. As we can see, that's working just fine. So let's actually embed this inside of a tracks mode. So when we boot up a tracks mode, we actually got an introduction video. So in the attract mode folder, what we're gonna do is find the intro folder. So we're gonna to go to the intro folder and inside of here, you're gonna have an intro.nut folder. What I'm gonna do is just drag and drop that intro.mp4 and I'm gonna just rename this. So right click on it, show more options, rename, and I'm gonna retitle this to intro and just leave the .mp4 there. So what we're going to do next with this is actually open up attract mode again and we just need to configure this so it reads. So attract.exe So as you can see that's just played automatically. If this isn't the case for you then just go to your configuration by pressing tab and from here just go up to intro press enter and just make sure that play intro is on yes. If it's on no, then just press enter on it and by pressing up and down, you can then flip between yes and no to enable it or no. Okay, next up, I'm gonna show you how to enable your screensaver for this. So say you wanna leave your attract mode set up idle for a few minutes, we can actually make the screensaver appear quicker. So what we're gonna do is go press tab and we're gonna to go to screen saver and under screen saver timeout, this is set to 500. We've also set this to 003, press enter and back and back. And if I leave this idle just for a few seconds, here we go, this is the screen saver. So as you can see, it's taking random images from my Nintendo NES games. Okay, next up, I'm gonna show you how to add your own music into a tracks mode. So I'm using this website and I'll leave the link in my description. And just here under latest remixes, I'm gonna just download one of these tracks, which are in .mp3. So if I click on Donkey Kong Country 2 Prismatic, and if I go to download, 
and download from A+. We can listen to the music and download it. Okay, so I've already downloaded this and I've got it on my desktop. So we need to go into the attract modes directory and into the sounds folder. Drop that Donkey Kong Country .mp3 inside. This time, we're going to open up the tracks mode again. And once we're inside the tracks mode, I'm going to press tab on my keyboard, go up to plugins and press enter. And right at the top, you'll find that audio mode will likely say disabled. If you enable this, and just go to enabled and this will likely say no. If you just press enter on it and press up or down on your keyboard to press yes. What we're going to do next is go to source directory and just exit out of attract mode by pressing the windows key. And we're going to go to the attract mode sounds folder and just right click at the search bar at the top and copy that directory. And back in attract mode, source directory, I'm going to press Ctrl and V and press enter. And if we come out of this, Okay, so let's take a look at cleaning up some of these images that didn't scrape. So there's a good chance then that the name conventions are totally wrong. And since we're using the game database to scrape our artwork that we set up, we need to take a look at the game's database. So what we're going to do is just head over to Google or whichever search engine you're going to be using. And I've just literally typed in the game's DB Sonic Spinball. And as we can see just here, the name of the game through the game's database, which is going to be scraping, is actually Sonic Spinball. So if we go back into my Mega Drive games folder, we can see here it actually says Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball. So I need to edit this by right clicking on the game.zip, show more options, rename. And what I'm going to do is just name this exactly how the game's database has it. So Sonic Spinball, press enter. Now this has been renamed, I'm going to go back to attract mode. If I press tab, I'm then going to go to emulators and Sega. And from here, I'm just going to go down to generate collection ROM list since we've just altered or edited one of the files inside and we just need to update this. So press enter on here, overwrite it exists in Sega list, yes. Now we're going to go to scrape artwork, press enter. And if we come back out, we can now see Sonic Spimple has now got artwork with it. Very cool stuff. And so the same with the other games in your collection. So it normally is just a case of renaming your files. It's that simple. Okay, and that's going to conclude my Attract Mode Setup Guide 2024 for beginners. Now, hopefully, I've covered all the basics just there, and I've made it as slow paced as possible. Uh, Attract Mode is deemed as one of the most hardest to configure, so for that reason, I took it particularly slow on configuring Attract Mode through settings and Attract Mode itself. Now, if this video is popular, I'm happy to do additional videos for attract mode such as setting up RetroArch, setting up BizHawk, MAME and so on and so forth. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation setup guides. I've got many, many, many video setups for different standalone emulators from microcomputers to consoles to arcade emulators and various other front end system setup guides that I've done. Join me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and TikTok. But anyways, until next time, stay retro.